Hi, welcome to Sunny's The Car Wash Factory. I'm Anthony Anoletto, and today I'm here with Ryan Cook from Diamond Shine. And we're gonna talk about clean, dry, shiny. It takes a lot to get a car clean, dry, shiny. I've always said the best equipment without the right chemistry won't work, and the best chemistry without the right equipment won't work. So we're gonna take you for a walk through our 135 EDT tunnel, our express detail tunnel. And we're gonna talk about the different type of uh, wash equipment that needs to go in there to really get a car clean and dry and shiny. And then also we're gonna talk with Ryan and add in where the right chemistry belongs in the right process. The first thing we talk about is, is setting the expectations for the customers. So the first thing we have in our tunnel is our Mr. Foamer Pinnacle Arch. And this is basically your welcoming sign to the customers they pull in. It'll uh, have the logo on it. It'll have your first, your, part of your first process on it. It'll also have a confirmation sign that tells the customer that what they bought at that pay station is what they're going to get as they roll in. Um, that's real important. We, you know, we do a lot of work with the control side to keep the cars in order. Um, and that's the very first thing we do. So again, as soon as we come in a car wash, the first thing we start with is chemistry. Ryan, how do we do that? Yeah, so typically on, you know, on the top package, we're gonna start right with the wall of foam. So, you know, it's usually our bath, our fusion bath product, product and it really kind of ties in nicely with that pinnacle arch. You get that nice uh, entrance presentation for the customer, and then they're immediately hit with this great light show and, and this massive amount of foam hitting their car, and it really, you know, brings that whole package together. And on a basic wash, would we have the same formulation, same type of product in our pre-soak? Yeah, so the pre-soak is the same no matter what package you get, but uh, then obviously as you increase the packages, that's where we add like the, you know, the fusion bath and that yeah. kind of thing. So as we go through the process to get clean, dry, shiny on the equipment side, it's imperative that we get chemical on the entire car. So we're using a dual applicator arch. We want to spray chemistry at the front of the car, center, open up all the way down the back, and then we want to come across the hood and hit the top of the vehicle and paint the back. Yep. And then I've always told them, if once we go over 100 cars an hour, if we really want to make sure we get the front and rear bumpers and license plate areas, we got to shoot it up from the floor. There's just no way to get it there from there. And all that is our alkaline pre-soak. Yep, we start off with an alkaline, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's key to think about you know the, car, the coverage on the car and making sure you get those little nooks and crannies. And with the shapes of cars now and some of the shapes of those license plate, uh, you know, the indention for the license plate, it can be really tricky. So it's important to make sure that you have the right applicator. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after that there, we get to our wash equipment. And with the wraparounds and the mitters, we need to lubricate that as well. So we've got a set of reverse wraps in this tunnel. And this is one of the important things that I see sometimes the mistake made. We'll send uh, foam generators out there and, and they'll, they'll sometimes mount them on the frame of the mitter and it's putting the foam on lap after the car gets hit by the brush. So in this application here, we like to put those foamers on on the back side of the applicator arch. That way there we get it on the car before the brush hits it. And that foam product we're using is now starting to turn the car into a low pH. Correct. Yeah, correct. After those first uh, couple applications, you know, with the CTA and the pre-soak of alkaline, really everything else in the tunnel is going to be low pH. And in some products, we're actually going to go super low to try to get the car to the right pH before it leaves. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as we go through the process, there we got we got wraparounds, and then we got a front-to-back mitter with our microclean material, and then another set of wraparounds. Wraparounds are unique in the sense that they start on the front of the car and they, sp they spin in a, in a rotation on drivers on the side, they're opposite, they help it walk around the car. So they'll clean the front, but they'll run off the nose real quick, but they'll come back and chase the back of the car. And at the same time, those wraparounds would wash the front side of the wheel well on a car and then wash the glass of the mirror because of the rotation. So once we get in the process, we've got to add some side brushes that go the other way, and it's important. Underneath that mirror, we do our um, our poodle brush or a bison brush or a wheel brush with also a rocker brush that'll help get the back side of that wheel well and clean in an opposite direction. Uh, we've got vans all the way down to little Mini Coopers or Mazda Miatas, so we've got to go from 72 inches tall down to the floor and really clean a car, so it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. While we're in that 901 mitter, there's a couple other things that we can do. If we're doing a, a regular wash package where, we might st where we're still using triple foam yep. as one of the fillers, um, a lot of times now we're putting that triple foam on early right in front of that mitter. Yeah, it's been a big change over the past five or so years, uh, putting the, uh, the triple foam a little bit closer to the entrance of the tunnel, and ultimately it, it just produces a better car. You still get that, that nice show from a triple foam, and I still think customers like it and like to see it, 
Uh, but on top of that, you know, it's, it's a hard product to rinse. So by giving a little bit of extra space in the tunnel to get it off, I think we end up producing a better car. And also, like in the like in the in-bay automatics, the customer in line gets to see that happen. Just like they get to see the, the fusion bath. Yep. Uh, if they didn't buy fusion bath, someone's seeing triple foam and they're seeing colors, they're seeing lights. They're saying, oh, why didn't I buy that? And they're looking at that confirmation sign, they know they should buy up. Um, on the back side of the emitter, this is another spot where we, where we start to get the car really um, back down to a low pH situation in the fusion process. Yeah, so for if, if somebody bought, you know, we really, you know, the fusion process is, it's one of our programs to help operators make money, but really it's kind of Sonny's philosophy on how to clean a car, right? And, and a big part of that is that is dropping the pH of the car. Yep. And so this is where we put the fusion prime and it's a super low product. We try to get the, the product itself, we want it to be below two. And really we're trying to get the surface of the car to about a pH of five. And it really helps with the shine and the drying at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And so that's, so that's a big add-on piece there. And, and, in, and right on the exit and wraparound, we're also shooting on some low pH foam that's got some lubricity to it. And those together help to get that car really neutral. And with all these products, we're adding lights, right? So like the triple foam, you know, that's one of the big, that's one of the big things that's had a huge impact on what triple foam looks like is just putting a few lights with it. You know, even if it's a white light to help, uh, you know, accentuate those colors. And then the Fusion Prime, we have it has its own light. So, you know, the customer's constantly getting confirmation through the tunnel that they that they bought a, a you know a premium package. Sure. And that's a and that's a huge help. And that's what like we said, is setting the expectations with the big sign in the middle and then confirming that they're gonna get the services as they go down the line is, is a huge thing. Um, after that whole big combo wash package with the, the spider. Now we go into our grill brush. This is our second generation grill brush. Um, this one here takes up a little bit less space, probably two feet less space, fits almost where a 50 inch brush was. And um, it actually spins the opposite direction of a wraparound. It acts as though it wants to eat the car and stop it from going down the tunnel, but then it gently pulls off the side and runs down the side of the car like a side brush. And it's 50 inches tall, so we get, again, Opposite rotation of the wraparounds, cleaning all the back surfaces, the bugs off the mirrors, the back side of the wheel wells, all that kind of stuff. And again, lubricating it with some low pH soap. Yep, it's, it's really important to lubricate those big brushes. That's actually a really cool piece of equipment. It's, I think it's, you know, it's one of the uh, more exciting things we've come up with, and it does do a fantastic job cleaning. Yeah, it's super clean. Once we go through that grill brush, now we gotta get to the high pressure part of it. Um, you know, cleaning with the soap and detergent, agitation is nice. But like in a self-serve bay or at home, you want some high pressure to, to really move that uh, product off the car. So here's where we start off with our Omni 350. We've got side nozzles and we've got a top nozzle as well. And we're oscillating side to side. We're using zero degrees with our patented uh, plus nozzle that injects some air and really maintains the pressure when it hits the car. And we pivot, follow the wheels. We pivot on the roof of the car, overlap, and do the, the back of the vehicle. We switch on the roof because we do overlap and we come down and do mirror blasters. So we blow out the mirrors and get rid of the foam so we can neutralize that and stop, the, stop some of that piece there. And again, this is all done with um, sometimes reclaimed water on the bottom, but fresh water on the top of the car. We never want to put reclaim above the, the wheel well, the, the, the side of the car. We want to make sure the top stays clean. So we're doing that all with fresh water and some reclaim on the bottom. And it's really a nice catch too, right? If you if you miss some some hard to get spots, or if you had to do some retracks because of bike racks or something yeah. like that, it's it's really a nice piece of equipment to have to kind of be that safety net, right? right. Because back in the touch-free days, if we were, we'd still be using two chemicals, a low pH and an alkaline, and then we'd be high pressure in the car. So we have basically that process going on here. Uh, maybe we flip flop the chemistry a little bit, but the high pressure really will get into those nooks and crannies where some of the cloth just can't reach. Um, this combination piece also is the next one coming up is our 2K14 top brush with pendulum attachment. And again, because we're, it's 135 footer, we're going to do some high volume. We're going to hit the wheels two times. Yep. So first time is oscillating up and down zero degrees. And the next time with the pendulum, it's an actual spinner. It's a, four no, a five nozzle spinner, two high outside zero degrees and a fan 10 degree in the middle. And it spins, but the, it follows the wheel because the tire pushes the roller on the floor for five feet. It drops into its recess, rolls back for the back tire, and does it again. So we stay on that wheel again for five feet on the pendulum and three feet on each time we do the wheels on the sides. So we're getting you know, a pristine finish on that wheel. We're getting a nice shine to it because we've had some low pH agitation after the alkaline wheel cleaner. 
and now we're getting a real shiny wheel ready to be dressed. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I think that's, you know, it's a good point, Anthony. I think it's really important to hit the wheels, you know, a few different times. Uh, you know, they're such a challenging, it can be such a challenging thing to clean, right? Yeah. To be able to actually have another piece of high pressure hit the wheel makes a big difference. Right. And then down in this process here, we've got, that, we've got our top brush here, and we can use that a little bit for um, some more cleaning, but we've also got to do our fusion uh, rinse. Correct. And, and, and get this thing prepped up for the wax as well. In the, in the fusion rinse is actually, uh, you know, it's typically it's like a waterfall arch. We have a couple different options there. You can do the old waterfall or you can do the new Mr. Foamer, uh, you know, rinse, foaminator rinse. And, and they both have uh, excellent presentation. And if you put it with the blue light, it's a really uh, cool experience in the middle of the wash. But the chemistry in it actually breaks, helps break down any residual foam and really sets it up for the, for the finishing products. Yeah. And uh, on this one here, we, we had one more um, top cleaning piece with another set of rockers, which is our 807 uh, side to side better. Um, little thing we did different here is we, we hung the cloth just like it would be on a front to back, opposed to what was traditional on a side to side where you see the edge of the cloth. And um, we actually move it side to side so it looks like a little hand wash process going up the car. So if we want to apply our hot wax in front of that, um, that's a great spot for it. Yep. Um, so we give it a little polish in and then we come down to the, the rinsing area. Yeah, so when we, as we're right before that arch there, if we're gonna do, you know, the, the, we do the Fusion Wax, which is our Canuba product, and then that gets buffed in, which, you know, gives the car a nice feel. Um, if you're doing the ceramic process, that's typically where we would do the first ceramic product. It, that is, uh, it's a heavier foaming product, so we wanna, we wanna make sure we have a little time to rinse that off. But both those products would be applied right in that area, and then and sometimes we'll do the, the rain repel just, just right after yeah, that. Right. So as we do come down there, we go into our new, uh, finishing arch and this one here we did because we're doing so many things and because of the ceramic and the three steps and some signage and graphics we actually took our rain ma and we kind of converted it to a four-legged arch with additional unit struts so we can put lights foamers and different applicators and signs yep. um, and i think it's a great place to do the actual final finishing yeah and it's it's, it's really uh, you know a nice option to have right to be able to actually put all that stuff in one place have it clean organized um, it can get a little crowded at the end of the tunnel, and so I think it was. This was a nice piece to add to give us that you know kind of proper spacing. But yeah, typically, uh, you know, again, if we don't mount the the rain repel on the back of, of that last piece of a friction, then it would be mounted to this. We are in the future. We're just going to be applying that just to the windshield, and then we do do the step two and, and three of the ceramic process in this arch. We'd also do the you know the drying agent. Uh, so just depending on what package you get, there's a lot going on. And, uh, and same thing with all the other stuff we're doing, lots of signage, lots of confirmation signage, and lots of lights, right? So I think it's really important to, to make sure you, you, you kind of bring that experience to the customer. Absolutely. And then as always, to get uh, the car finished, we finish up with the spot-free rinse. Yep. So here we're doing a rain bar um, with our spot-free, and then we're also doing the rain mirror rinses again, trying to push that, that RO water into the mirrors. So whatever we do blow out of it with the mammoths or um, the other blowers that we don't get any spots streaking down the side of the car. The next step we have is we go into our, our blower arch and this here is our V-nozzle uh, blower arch configuration with um, 10 producers and we start off with a small single V and then we follow that up with some split V's and then we go into a double V and there's a lot of V's in this. A lot of V's. Um, and, and then we have a, a flipping V at the end so we get the back of the car. And what's unique about this here is we made this new arch where it's got four legs, but it's got three cross beams so that we can easily mount this together and save some space. But with the two mammoths, one on the first leg and one on the second leg, now we're able to flip that first mammoth at the mirrors and it blows the mirrors out of the car and then it comes back home again and does, it goes to the end, flips in the back. That second mammoth on the last leg will stay aiming towards the back of the tunnel and clean all that stuff we blew out of the mirrors, blow it up, blow it by, and they both flip on the back. And when you add that back flipping V, we've dried the car about as good as we can uh, and it has ever been able to do that in a tunnel. Now it's amazing for the amount of space that we're using. You know, you, you know obviously, you know, I'm, I, I live out west and you get to see some of those tunnels that have, you know, 50 foot tunnel, you know, drying rooms, right? With And, and really they're not producing any drier car than we are with, with this nice package. Yeah. And, it, and it's really, uh, you know, a small footprint. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the, the drying really happens and, and it works real well because of what we did with the chemistry. The whole setup process is what gets us there. Yeah, a big part of you know, uh, you know, we joked around at the beginning of this, you know, how we used to point fingers at each other back in the old days. You oh, know, yeah. 
the chemicals problem, the equipment, we don't have that luxury anymore, right? We had to make it work together. And, and we spent a lot of time on, on creating a process that really helps set the car up for that for that great dry and the, and the shine, right? And, and that starts with getting the car clean first. I mean, if you really wanted to break this down to the simple ABCs of it, we get the car clean, we get it to the right pH, and then we use the right finishing products, right? So. And, and then as a customer, as well as a manufacturer, with the new ceramic, I mean, it's amazing when the blower hits it, how it explodes off the car. We're producing a different car. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is, I'm a 130 foot tunnel. I've got the blower system. I've got the buff and dry. And I just, I stand there and hang, I hang out in my tunnel and watch cars go through um, because it is that amazing how dry it is before we even get to the buff and dry. Buff and dry, again, is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. When you can fit it with the wraparounds and the top, and you can come in with the wraparounds just time perfectly to wipe the glass of the mirror without turning them, and then coming across the back of the car just until it kisses and goes back, goes over the top of the car and it makes the windshield crystal clear, the hood dry. And again, I'm gonna go back to the blowers. When we flip the Vs and flip the Mammoths, that water on the back of the car is gone, even on an SUV, it's all down by the license plate number, and the wraparounds pick that up. I've never seen a car come out so clean and dry in a tunnel as we have today. It's, and it's, oh, yeah, I, I man, I, I would definitely second that. I think it's just tremendous the amount of quality we're producing. But the buff and dry is is such a nice piece of it's it's a nice you know kiss off, right? It's a nice little thank you. It's it's a it's a neat experience at the end of the tunnel. And I, I would tell you from just going through with my family, like my father in law, that kind of stuff. You know, he he notices that, right? That that hey, the windshield's totally clean and all that kind of stuff. I think sometimes we lose sight of how impactful a piece of equipment like that is. But it's, to me, it's tremendous and it's a no-brainer to be in every tunnel. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. I mean, my goal was always to build an express wax tunnel and this is, a, the buff and dry is kind of like the finishing touch. You get done, you clean the car, you polish it up, you, you put some shine on it, and then you buff it up with a nice microfiber towel and that's almost what we're doing with that, that buff and dry. And I think uh, the customers that embrace this technology and do this kind of tunnel, I think we'll get some raving fans for customers. Oh yeah, you, you definitely get set yourself apart from the competition, there's no doubt about it. So. And then, do we also have a tire dressing machine at the end there? We sure do, because you know, without a tire dressing, it's like uh, you know, not, have, not polishing your shoes before you get dressed to put that suit on. So the tire shine machine, again, over the years, uh, we've gone from sponges to uh, now bristle brushes that are flagged. You know, the chemistry kind of holds on to that flag tip of the brush. It doesn't make a lot of drag out on the driveway like the sponge did with the dripping. And uh, the performance of this product has been great. Um, I, I, lo I love the, the solvent based product and that's what we're using there. Fantastic results. Customers rave about it. Yeah, we offer a, about three different tire dressings. Two of them are solvent based and one is water based. And, and really the water based one is for folks that have some challenges, maybe with their reclaim, that kind of stuff. But, uh, but definitely if you want that wet look, it's hard to go away from an oil-based, solvent-based type dressing, but it, it, they do do a, a fantastic job. And the, and the tire dressing machine, one of the things I think that's really changed with it over the, over the past few years is just the consistency. You know, that they, as long as you, you know, just stay up on the little bit of maintenance that they need, um, they're going to produce a great tire for, yeah. for years to come. And it, and it is the final touch. It's one of the most noticeable things when they come out of the car wash, even before the shine. And we did a lot of work for that shine but the tires are one of the most noticeable things. Oh, absolutely. Well, if you want to get clean, dry, shiny, I hope this will help. I want to thank Ryan uh, for spending some time with us and, and giving you guys some information of how to put it all together between equipment, chemistry, um, and, and making it all work. Uh, it takes, takes two to tango, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the dance.